Hello, good day. Welcome back. Thanks for watching. All right. So we just finished up the previous video was doing forms and I didn't cover all the form elements. I said that though, like I did two videos on forms. And so I show you a basic one, show you where to find out more about forms. And, um, and so one of the things I want to do is now show you how you can, um, do styling for your elements. So we're going to leave forms and jump right into the next section, which is cascading style sheet. So let's do that. So uh, let me go here and let's check and see is our stuff dirty. Uh, let's commit it. And so let's say commit and I'll say advanced form or something like that or forms part two, for example, HTML forms part two. Okay. And so we have that. And then uh, let's see the directory we're in here. Da, da, da. And I'll go back up one and then I'll go to the CSS. One. Okay. All right. And so um, it's look like we got some directory in here already. Um, uh, it's four zero. Right, um, so nothing, no code in there, and so that's fine. So I'll I'll change the data tree here too. So um, um, open folder, and I'll go up to HTML, and then I'll go to CSS directory and basic. Okay, fine. All right, so. Let's jump right into CSS. And you know what? I, I don't want to keep this video too long for a number of reasons. Um, I did say when I started notice that I'll try to make the videos between 15 and 20 minutes. And the last set of videos have been like 30 minutes. Um, definitely getting close to that. So over 25 to 30 minutes. So let me set a timer here for 10 uh, minutes. And then when I hear that go off, I'm going to start winding up, um, closing out for you guys to where we are. Okay. Um, so let's start off by creating a new file. So I'm going to say new file and say index that, uh, no, that's from the wrong place. I'm going to type that. So, and I'll do edit and HTML template. I choose HTML5 and that's it. And I'm going to say save. Say index.html. So what are we talking about? We're talking today about cascading style suite or CSS. All right, so CSS stands for cascading style sheet and we, we basically the important thing you really want to think of remember here is styling okay and so let's just start out very simple and we're going to put h1 tag here and we say hello from css okay or hello css whatever and so we'll save it and we'll kind of start um our page going and um there we go Hello CSS. And so that's the default. So what is styling really? That's how styling is really, how do you um, alter the look of your HTML elements, right? And so um, different elements, diff different attributes, and we can manipulate some of those attributes. So here's one. So there's an element um, on this body, el uh, there's an attribute on this body element called background, all right? But that so we know that of so let me back up there are a number of element there are a number of attributes on each element that you can see here right um but one of those attributes is the style and the style which controls the style this which controls the styling of this attributes takes a certain format it's um the name the property name so you could think of it as property name colon value semicolon and then you could put another property name, colon value, and semicolon, and you keep going, okay? So one of the style properties, so while this, this element body has a property called style, the style itself, which is how you specify the style and for body through this attribute, hits style itself as several attributes. So here, here, here's, here's one, background, right? color background color let's call it gray uh, or even blue right 
and semicolon. The semicolon is optional, but I can save that. And then if I refresh the page, um, background, I didn't spell that correctly. And there we go. As soon as I think, you can see the page changed, but the background was changed for that. And I can say like light blue, right? And you can see it changed in the background there. I can say yellow. So there are a number of colors that are supported and so you can just mess with those. And so I have changed a background for this entire body element, which means everything that sits on my page, you know, can remember body control, everything is in this view port, right? This area. And so, but I can also change background for this, this um, element, right? Remember I said every element have, um, has this background property. So style, I want to modify the styling of this at, um, element. And so I can say background that color and I'll say this is light blue right and you could see already it's changed there right so that's just an example of how you can manipulate um, you know the different HTML element and you could see this is a h1 tag and it stretches from across the entire page regardless of the width of my screen okay let's try another tag let's try for example span tag and I'm going to put style there and I'm going to say background color and we're going to do white and um, I'm going to say hello All right I'll go over here and take a look and notice you see this line this outline around this um, span tag uh, you could see that it only takes up the, the, the outline is wrong. Oh, um, so the my background. Oh, I didn't spell that correctly again. Okay, and so there you, you go. You can see the difference between when I set the background on the H1 tag and a span tag. And so with in CSS and in terms of thinking about the attribute, the types of elements that you manipulate, there are two things you two types of element. Some of them are called block level and some are inline. So block level elements, they always start on a new line and they take up the entire line regardless of the width. So H1 is a block level element, body, uh, of course, and div. So if I put a div tag here and I say, right, uh, you'll see that oh, there's the outline for that div tag and it takes up the entire line so too does the h1 tag whereas the span tag it's an inline um, tag so the property that controls um you know these tags even though by default is the display property by the way um the display style property it's so that display style property is set to block for div and h1 tags and then for like span and some other tags image and so on is set to inline a paragraph tag you can also imagine is also a um, a block tag so P and so right and so you could see that went across the entire page but what if I wanted to make um, my h1 tag here behaves as though it's an inline tag like a span um, so with with inline tags they just you know, um, they go one after the other, whereas black tag goes like, um, like I said, in a new line and takes up the entire page, width of the page. So I can say, I remember I said that the style property to control how it's displayed, whether it's displayed as a block or inline, is the display property. So this is by default block, right? So I want to make it inline. So notice you can see already that it shrunk and then the span tag came after it. So you can always change how something, um, you know, some of these elements are displayed. And that's all part of styling. You might want, you know, to do this depending on what, what is it that you're trying to do. Um, so display block. And then you can see behind there that no, the span tag is taken up. So they have the default, but then you can manipulate, manipulate it otherwise. So a diff tag is just like a span tag except by default that div is block and a span is inline. Okay, but then you can, you can see you can manipulate the block tag, the block attribute um, property for style 
to change how that is. So, so far we've seen two style properties that we can change, background color and um, the display property. Well, there, there are some others, there are many of them, and I'll show you how to find the rest. And I just want to show you um, the different way you can style. And then in terms of the exact thing you can style, um, you'll find, you figure it out over time. And I'll also tell you something else a little bit later. So, okay, so style, um, style, sorry, I already have that. And so one, of, the other one is color, and I could say like red. And that affects, uh, this is optional if you only use, have one of them, but once you have more than one property specified, you have to put a semicolon. So red, and you can see that affects the text color or the color of the contents, um, um, of the inner contents of this, this tag. So now you know you can affect the text. Um, you can also do things like affect, affect the, um, the text decoration, you know, whether it's heavy, bold, you can affect the, the font. So, um, you know, you can affect the alignment. So for example, you can see this is a P tag and the text here is left justify. What if I want it to be centered? I could say text that align center. And there it is, it's aligned center. So it says that whatever is inside this tag is aligned. Um, so for example, I could put another P, I could nest P tags. I mean, you generally wouldn't see this, but there's nothing that's very wrong with this in P tag. Uh, why is that showing up? Let me change this to a diff tag. I guess it doesn't want me to miss a peep tag. Okay, so they're inside a div. I don't know, you can miss in the P tags. That's crazy. All right, so there we go. All right, um, and so you can see that it also centered um, the contents of this, right? And so this tag is also something. And there's the 10 minutes, I'll stop this now and I'll start winding up. Um, I didn't get to, so, <laughs> all right, the number of other tags. So um, style and, and properties you can style. So you go to W3C school as before, you go to CSS reference, and here you'll see, you know, color, background, border, basic box, fonts, um, you know, listing, animation, transfer, a, a whole bunch of other things you can, you can um, think. What I'm going to do in, so you see background, you can set an image and stuff, um, background color, all these other things you can see, all these different properties, the border. What I'll do in the next video is I'll show you, so this is one way in which you can style an element, where you write it in line um, on the element itself. There's, there are two other ways. One is to do inline styling. And then there's another way we do an external file. And I'll cover those in the next video. And then maybe I'll do another video um, on kind of state and style sheet to talk about some other properties that you might see um, me use from time to time, like width and height. Those are and kind of nice to know. Um, the one thing I want to say, though, is I don't focus so much on properties. Oh, and I have a cover selector. So we probably might end up doing like two or th at least three videos on Cascade and style sheet. Um, the reason I don't focus so much on styling is because I use the CSS library like Bootstrap or Angular Material, and they have really good, they've done all the styling to make some really good um, uh, looking UI elements. So you tend not to need to do too much styling. So if you went on to components and maybe, uh, uh, let's see, CSS, uh, let's see, then, your system, no. That's not what I want. I'm looking for not getting started. Components. I think components. Okay, let's scroll down. Um, where buttons and drop down. So, you know, they've already done the styling. You see their input box have like these rounded corners and so on. And so nice buttons with different colors. So if you use that, so they use CSS to, to accomplish all of this. But if you use this library, then you don't have to actually style a button have a blue background and white text and have rounded borders and so on because it already comes with a library, right? So that's what I tend to, to, to use and I encourage people to use is you want to spend time focus on, on the problem you're trying to solve, which is creating an application. And you really, if you don't have to spend time styling, just like with layout, when I said, don't spend time trying to learn layout, 
you can use one of these libraries that do really, really the, using the grid layout system that does really nice layout for you. What about if you had to style something like this? You can certainly do it, but why? You just use the library. So basically spend time learning how to do something productive and let people who have the patience to figure out the styling do that and you just spend your time making your application or writing your web page or, or just learning the basic. And as you spend more time coding, trust me, you're gonna figure out how to integrate more style and animation and all this other stuff. There's some things you can't get away from learning, like JavaScript. And we'll do some of that as, and again, don't remember, you don't have to learn everything upfront. This stuff takes years and years. I've been programming for 20 odd years and I'm still learning, okay? Still don't know everything about JavaScript, still don't know everything about HTML. They always had in stuff. There's other stuff that I'm surprised to learn. And so, um, like today, um, I didn't realize you couldn't put paragraph inside a paragraph. I'm pretty sure way back in the days when I used to, when I first started learning HTML, I did just that. That's before the diff tag was even around, right? But maybe not, I don't remember really. But I was surprised that I couldn't have a paragraph with a paragraph. So you're still always gonna be learning new things always, and you just can't cram and learn everything one time. So I'm gonna stop the video here, and I'll see you in the next video where we're gonna continue doing some, some more styling. All right, all right. Take care, thanks for watching, see you. Uh, I feel like if I rush through that, so I'm sorry if it seems kind of fast. So before I go, let me save this, and um, maybe I check out a branch, create a new branch, I call this chapter 04, section 01, and um, I'll add that, I'll commit, and I'll say it, um, CSS part one. <laughs> That'll be very boring. All right, thanks, see you in the next video.